Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Cora Lingling Xu, an assistant professor at Durham University in the UK. I received my PhD in Sociology of Education from Cambridge in 2016 with the support of a full cost scholarship from the Cambridge Trust. You can follow me on YouTube, Bilibili and Red via Dr. Xu Gazing at Academia or Xu Bo Shi Kan Xue Shu, which is the Chinese title of my channels. In my channels, I share tips on academic reading, writing, publication, and academic job searches, especially in the UK context, in both Chinese and in English. My Twitter handle is Cora Lingling Xu, and my network's uh, Twitter is Qi App Mobilities. In my paper today, I will draw on my recent publication in the Review of Education on a typology that I developed. I will seek to map out the landscape of Chinese higher education with a view to informing future research. Towards the end of this presentation, I will also introduce the growing scholarship in this field of Chinese education mobilities as hosted and promoted by the Network for Research into Chinese Education Mobilities, NRCEM, which I'm founder and director of. First of all, why do we need a typology of Chinese higher education mobilities? I argue that there are three reasons. Firstly, it is to do with the scale and types of educational mobilities in China, which have seen unprecedented growth over the past decades. These include a steady increase of Chinese international students abroad, as well as international students who are attracted to pursue degree-level studies in China's own universities. In addition, the Chinese national and local governments have invested in sending its scholars abroad and attract non-Chinese academic staff to join Chinese higher education institutions from overseas. Moreover, the number of Confucius Institutes reached 500 in April 2017, while the number of international branch campuses of Chinese universities have also been rising. These are in addition to more than 1,000 Chinese foreign cooperatively run schools as of 2016 that China has welcomed to its soil. Patterns of educational mobilities are changing and are intricately linked to globalization increasing neoliberalism and geosocial transformations. Among the students moving from one part of China to another to pursue higher education, a significant proportion of these students are displaced from rural to urban contexts, from economically less developed and ethnic minorities dominated Western regions to the economic centers and Han dominated areas in the East. In addition to sheer scale of educational mobilities emanating from China, more complex and diversified patterns are emerging, including both older and newer forms of educational mobilities, which not only impact on China itself, but have significant implications for the rest of the world, in particular in the sphere of higher education. Such implications may include transforming the landscape of higher education in China, as well as challenging the Western domination within the field of global higher education. However, to understand what is going on in China, it is important to understand it as a whole, not only through ex exchanges and collaborations with other countries and regions, but also what is happening within China. In view of the above, it seems that such a general state of flux, while symptomatic of progress and innovation also presents confusion and begs for some kind of classification system or indeed a typology. With such a view, in this paper I hoped to achieve the following purposes. First, to systematically comb and categorize both established and newer forms of higher education mobilities of China, and two, to highlight key issues and debates that are likely to attract or indeed deserve future research attention in the field. Now, in order to do that, I'd like to first proffer um, a definition of educational mobilities. In this paper, educational mobility refers to the educationally motivated geographic movements of students, scholars, programs, and institutions, generally in higher education, from their home country or region to another. 
In charting the various forms of educational movements in contemporary China, the paper adopts the plural form of ed educational mobilities to indicate the varied natures of mobilities that are motivated by or resultant of educational activities. Moving on to uh, the methodology of this paper, I conducted a thematic narrative review of approximately 250 research articles published between 2010 and 2018, as well as non-academic sources. During the analysis, preference was given to authors from Chinese or East Asian contexts in order to ensure a non-Western bias and also to comp capitalize on research literature generated from within China, which is often um, uh, not uh, very much uh, cited in international literature. Uh, following the literature review, the typology was developed in, and improved through a number of iterative stages. Now, um, this is a simplified version of the typology. Um, uh, if you are interested in the more comprehensive version, you are more than welcome to read the paper itself. As you can see from this table, I argue that educational mobilities in China nowadays can be categorized along two different axes. Firstly, along the direction of flows, um, which is the uh, 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 horizontal axis, um, there are the home di uh, dimension, meaning within China mobilities, and the abroad dimension, uh, which include, uh, includes outbound and inbound directions. Um, secondly, from the social agent perspective, meaning the vertical axis uh, on the left, um, there are students, academic and institution mobilities. Now these two axes together allow us to have nine different combinations of mobilities. Briefly, I use the red color to indicate types of mobilities that have been well represented in the literature that we have reviewed, and the color green to suggest that these mobilities are much less explored and should be paid attention uh, in future uh, research. For instance, Chinese students abroad, Chinese student returnees, visiting scholars and academic returnees, um, there is a substantial body of literature uh, uh, on these topics and areas, and these are arguably areas that attract most policy attentions from the West, given the economic implications as well as the importance of such literature in relation to the global talent war discourse, or indeed the brain drain or reverse brain drain discourses. In contrast, academic mobility within China an institutional mobility that included China's own universities setting up branches in different parts of China have received little research attention. The mobilities that are in black color are those that have received a fair amount but not extensive research attention. Through devising this typology by reviewing the literature, in this paper I have um, made critical arguments in three areas. Number one, I critique the mobility imperatives in China and the role of the state. Number two, I point out a need for longitudinal research on educational mo mobility trajectories. And number three, I point out the need for a comprehensive theoretical toolkit. However, due to time limit, I will not elaborate on these critiques. Um, overall, this paper brings to the fore the significance to consider external educational mobilities in conjunction with internal educational mobilities for four reasons. Firstly, as Tindall and colleague 2015 argue, due to the impact of globalization, the national competition of higher education is increasingly part and partial of the international. In other words, the students in China are now competing for resources not only with their compatriots, but also with those who are enrolled in branch campuses of Chinese higher education institutions abroad, as well as international students studying in China. Secondly, the internal forms of educational mobilities are often catalysts of preconditions or results of external educational mobilities. For instance, students moving from rural backgrounds to big cosmopolitan cities may gain the inspiration and means to venture further abroad, 
All students from mainland China to Hong Kong or Macau may take these territories as a stepping stone to pursue higher education further afield. The same can be found among those enrolled in private joint venture universities in China. In other words, the internal and external mobilities are intricately linked with one another. It is only when we take all the parts into consideration could we understand more holistically the scale and nature of educational mobilities in China to date and to gauge their impact on the rest of the world. Thirdly, it is my contention following Ma Jingshan 2017 that the internal educational equality can have a direct impact on the future development of external educational mobilities of China. As internal educational mobilities in China have been considered one of the major mechanisms to either exacerbate or equalize the Chinese society, it is an important piece of the puzzle that should not be missed. Are external mobilities diverting resources from internal higher education establishments and developments? Are external mobilities expanding China's national capacities, or are they merely serving the rich and the powerful? These are questions that remain to be answered. Lastly, theoretically and conceptually speaking, we advocate more systematic theoretical work that allows researchers to not only engage with any specific subtype of educational mobility in China, but also cast a broader view on the overall picture of educational mobilities, including those in situ and those on the move, as well as those in between, that is, the would be mobile subjects. Um, this is the reference uh, the, of the paper that I uh, have been basing on uh, for this paper today. So if you're interested, you can uh, read the paper in its full form. Um, as a continuation of this typology of higher education mobilities, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce the network for research into Chinese education mobilities. Um, the short form is called NRCEM. This is a research network that I founded in 2017, and I've been director of this network since. Um, you can follow us on our YouTube, uh, which is NRCEM uh, China, or uh, via Twitter, our handle is Qi at Mobilities, or you can join our mailing list uh, by emailing Chinese at Mobilities at Outlook.com. Um, I'm also going to show you uh, some details of the website itself. Now, this is the website of the Network for Chinese Education Mobilities. Um, as you can see, we have different sections in this network. Uh, mainly to encapsulate the latest scholarships and research opportunities within the cross-disciplinary field of higher education, of Chinese education mobilities. Um, especially if you pay attention to our research highlights uh, section, which encompasses a host of different types of education mobilities. Uh, as you can probably identify some of our uh, education mobility types have been featured in the typology that I just introduced, such as academic mobility, student mobility, and institutional mobility. But you can also see that there is indeed a growing uh, a scholarship, a growing body of substantial scholarship that has uh, paid attention to uh, various different types of emerging uh, mobilities within and across China. And such uh, Scholarship has paid attention, for instance, to the rural-urban relation, to the ethnicity, gender and sexuality, teacher uh, mobility, language mobility, uh, etc. Yeah. Um, another section that I want to draw your attention to is our podcasts. We have two different podcast programs. One is Meet the Author, where you would have an opportunity to listen to what uh, uh, some of the authors who have published their works uh, very, very recently, um, listen to their research experience, but also to their tips and advice about how to do research field work, how to get published, how to write a book proposal, how to turn a PhD thesis into um, 
a book, you know, how to propose your book proposal to a university press, et cetera, et cetera. Our second podcast program is about lived experiences of uh, educational, educationally mobile subjects. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, during COVID-19, you know, we interviewed uh, scholars and students uh, who were either either confined or who had to fight very hard to uh, become mobile uh, due to the COVID-19 constraints, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you'll be able to listen to to the the educationally mobile subjects themselves talk about education mobilities. Um, Another section that I would like to draw attention to is our newly established YouTube channel where we have scholars present their uh, latest research uh, in, in the form of a video. So it, it would give you a, a different sort of uh, a sensory uh, experiences uh, uh, in terms of assessing this uh, scholarship. Um, our network also has a great deal of opportunities uh, about how to build your capacity such as uh, our capacity building uh, section where you will find a lot of information about conferences, about um, uh, opportunities to publish, call for papers, or you can advertise your research if you are calling for participants. It also has tips uh, about how to get published, how to look for jobs, etc, etc. And regarding jobs, we have this dedicated section on job opportunities where you will find opportunities about uh, postdoctoral uh, uh, fellowships, about uh, lectureships, about different kinds of professorships uh, that are open uh, and could be relevant to scholars in uh, cogent uh, fields uh, of Chinese education mobilities. Um, so you, you can uh, stay uh, abreast with such opportunities. Now, I would like to um, show you some examples. Uh, for instance, the, our research highlight session is our flagship uh, section here uh, in, in, uh, in this network. So if you're interested in uh, sending your research highlights to us, you can read our author's guidelines here. And here, these are just some um, links to the corresponding sections. So, um, but be, below, be, beneath this, you can see uh, that we have published uh, by uh, by now, uh, more than 100 entries of research highlights. Okay, and these entries uh, went far back to 2017. So this uh, list that you are you are seeing now is actually the latest uh, scholarship. Okay, from 2017 onwards. Yeah, so it encompasses uh, all kinds of uh, research uh, uh, education mobilities, and some of these you can even see, uh, you know, the Chinese versions. Yeah, so so you can see uh, uh, Chinese uh, under, uh, uh, versions of, of our research highlights, although most of them are in English. Yeah, and um, I would just like to draw attention to, for instance, uh, student mobility is uh, one of our most uh, well populated uh, field um, or type of mobility. So you can see we have 65 entries here from all kinds of disciplinary backgrounds, um, uh, such as like, for instance, this one is, was published in environmental sociology. This one was published in higher education policy and management, comparative education review. So it has all types of educational mobilities like, um, you know, African uh, international students experiences in China, um, such as, uh, you know, theories, the role of theory in uh, qualitative research on Chinese international students. You name it, okay. So it's very, very comprehensive, and it's um, it includes some of the most up-to-date uh, research scholarship on student mobilities. But uh, let me just show you some examples of mobility types that are less familiar to you, to to you probably. So, for instance, if you're interested in uh, learning about gender and sexuality, yeah, in in terms of Chinese education mobilities, there are three entries. So you can see this is like a fairly underdeveloped or under-researched area. OK, um, but if, if you're interested, you should, by all means, uh, visit uh, uh, some of these uh, entries. Um, and for instance, if you click on, on this entry, like let's say, for instance, this one, uh, and you can see ah, it's about queer migration across the Sinophone wo uh, queer world, queer Chinese Malaysian students educational mobility to Taiwan. And you can see the, the author. You can see uh, the link to the article that, that 
that uh, uh, he was highlighting. Yeah, and then you can see the references. You can see the uh, author's biography. So our formats are the same. Okay, yeah. So uh, let's go back to, um, uh, let me show you another one, which is about language mobility. It's also quite an um, under-researched area, but again, you can find some very interesting uh, articles here about, for instance, Myanmar ethnic minority students, uh, how they, in Yunnan, so how they negotiate language ideologies in the learning of Putonghua, or about um, um, how uh, Mandarin fever and Chinese language learning uh, play out uh, in Brunei's middle schools, for instance. So if you're interested, you should by all means explore this. Or teacher mobility, knowledge mobility, uh, very interesting uh, research. Again, these are smaller sections, but very, very interesting. Um, and there are also some overall trends. So these are not like about a very specific type of uh, education mobilities, but they are very helpful for you to think about the overall structures or the overall uh, uh, underlying logics. For instance, uh, our latest one uh, is about uh, Professor Paul Willis' new book, Being Modern in China. And then um, if you uh, click on it, it actually introduces uh, uh, Paul Willis, the very famous uh, author uh, of uh, Learning uh, to Labor. Um, he published a new book uh, on being modern in China uh, very recently, so you can uh, have a read uh, about this book. Yeah. All right. So this is our research highlight session. Um, I'd like to uh, bring your attention to the podcast, which I briefly introduced. So if you uh, click on the meet the author, here you can see the different episodes, right? So uh, like this one was by Jamie uh, Coates. So but if you click here, you can be join the uh, dedicated uh, page to to uh, meet the author. So this is uh, uh, Jamie Coates. He uh, talked about uh, Chinese students in Japan. And if you click on it, it will then bring you to the podcast itself, uh, the, the, the podcast uh, page. And then if you just click on it, then you will be able to listen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meet the Author podcast. Listeners remember, but there were large anti-Japan riots around then. Um, and so I had this very strong impression of the kind of anti japan influence the decision to study abroad are in some ways um, irreconcilable. Yeah, so and you can see here, we have uh, quite a few episodes, right? Episode seven was about meritocracy and Gaokao. Episode six was about cross boundary schooling. Yeah. So if you just, uh, uh, if we just uh, click back, you can see there is some introduction uh, to, to this episode and then to the author. Yeah, so you can see we have quite a few episodes with the authors, uh, including this one, it's about new elite schooling in China by Dr. Shunning Liu. And this was about a special issue on citizenship and education in China. And this was about international student mobility between Africa and China. And here you can also see like a summary of the interview. Yeah, so some of uh, our interviews will have summaries similar here. Uh, we talked about uh, rural ethnic and disability education in China. This one we talked about cross-boundary schooling, um, and this one we talked about meritocracy and Gaokao. Yeah, and you can, uh, if you want to buy the books, you, you can also see the discount information, for instance. Okay, so this was the Meet the Author podcast, and then we also have the Lived Experience podcast, uh, where we had episodes with uh, different international students and scholars, and you can some of these we have uh, Chinese versions, for instance. Yeah, so this was a, a collaboration with the with the uh, um, uh, WeChat uh, account of Inspiring Teacher. Okay, and then you can listen to a summary of this episode. You, you can read the summary of this episode in, in English. So we have a, a lot of uh, resources and for for this series, we have by far, uh, we, we even have we have six episodes and also a photo essay. Yeah, and uh, for instance, this one was about uh, this uh, student, PhD student experience uh, of traveling uh, from UCLA to uh, back to, to China. Okay, so these are just some photo essays 
very interesting. And this one was uh, in um, in Chinese, for instance. So you may, uh, this was about uh, Chinese, mainland Chinese students' experiences in, in Taiwan during the COVID-19. So you can listen to it, for instance. Okay, let me just uh, play for you. Okay, so these are just uh, to, to give you some taste about our podcast uh, um, uh, programs. And this is the our YouTube channel. So our YouTube channel, if you click on it, uh, it will direct you directly to the to the YouTube. Yeah. So um, here you can uh, have a look at our uh, playlist. So we have capacity building, we have research highlights. And if you uh, click on our research highlights uh, playlist, you can see we have um, different papers. For instance, this one was about tackling rural urban inequalities. This one was about interrogating international school teacher precarity in China. This one was about international student mobility between China and Africa. And this was about cross-border student mobilities in China. And this was about time and uh, career imagination of Chinese international students. And this was about the making of transnational distinction of Chinese international students. This was about competing for privilege of uh, Chinese high school students. And this was uh, about Chinese uh, higher education mobilities. Yeah. So you can see uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, papers uh, on this uh, playlist. Okay, um, and then uh, if you uh, uh, click on the, if you, uh, you know, you are more than welcome to subscribe, yeah, uh, but then let's uh, click on the uh, capacity building. Uh, uh, here. here we have uh, two videos, one was about meditation, it's in uh, Chinese, and this one uh, is about uh, getting an academic job um, the structure in the UK as an uh, international student. So it gives some uh, very practical tips. Okay, so you are more than welcome to uh, uh, watch um, these uh, YouTube videos. So uh, they will give you lots of information, lots of useful information. Okay, um, now let's talk about our capacity building section. So our capacity building section is extremely uh, extensive. So for instance, this one, it's about the, the advice on getting an academic job, um, but it also has um, conference information or webinar. For instance, number five is a webinar on youth mobilities, uh, call for applications for uh, um, summer school, call for papers for a special issue in the International Journal of International Students, a call for research participants. So it has a, a whole list of um, information, okay, about po potential research opportunities. It also has tips, for instance, about how to deal with journal rejections, how to balance your time during your PhD, uh, about writing your thesis, writing for publication, and gaining teaching experience as a PhD candidate. So it has a host of very, very useful information. So I would strongly encourage you to visit this section as often as you can. Um, then let's uh, have a look at our job opportunities section. This one um, you know, has all kinds of postdoctoral fellowships, associate professorships, lectureships, um, you know, open rank positions in globalization development. It has all kinds of job opportunities. So, and you can see the, the list is growing uh, quite uh, fast. So you are more than welcome to visit our um, our network uh, website. 